Hey everyone, we are here at Primitive Gatherings and today we are going to do triangle paper. I want you all to be confident when you start stitching your Oh Say Can You Sew quilt along triangles. I know that some of you lose your mind about triangles and to me it's the easiest shape. So I, I just don't understand all this pressure about triangles. So here is a beautiful easy triangle quilt and what I mean by easy is easy to put together. Um, a lot of them. So when you when I say 1152 half square triangles yeah, that's probably what's in this quilt too, I don't know. But once you see how easy these are to make, you're gonna fall in love with them and you're gonna to wanna to put triangles in every quilt. I know people who don't do quilts because they have triangles in it. And I think that's crazy because, tri I mean like three is my favorite number, so why wouldn't I love a triangle, All right? So let's get you over the fact that triangles are hard because they are not. And if you've seen my body of work, you're gonna see all these triangles and you're gonna see them from half inch all the way big clunky. There's a quilt I'm staring at over here that I think has uh, nine and a half inch half square triangles in it. But um, don't be afraid. And hopefully after watching this video today, you will feel very confident about any triangle that you have to make. Now, if your pattern is not designed for triangle paper, you might have to do a little math to figure out how many you need to do, but hopefully I can explain that to you as well. So if you have any questions, Heidi is over there monitoring, so put it in the feed and we will go over some of those. And remember, no question is too dumb. Just ask if you're confused about anything. We would love to help you out with that. All right, so in an earlier video, I might have said that this is going to be something in your future. So this is what I'm going to teach you how to do today because these are one inch finished triangles. So what does that mean? You buy triangle paper finished size. So one inch finished. You see that? This one in the middle is actually the only finished one. So see how when it's in the quilt here, it's going to measure one inch. When it's not sewn in all the way and has some seam allowance on it, or when they're just separate units, they're going to measure one and a half inches. So I hope that kind of is clear. And then on my blog, under, um, I think I have some quilting charts like up in the top header where it tells you like if you want to do a one and a half inch finished half square triangles, it tells you, you know, what size your pattern is calling for. So if it says cut two and three eighths inch squares, that's one and a half inch finished half square triangle. And they're easy if they are straight like one inch, two inch, you just add seven eighths. But if they're one and a half or two and a half or one and a quarter, then you have to add the seven eighths and then you have to do that little bit of math. And I know fractions aren't everybody's game, but I have that chart that will convert what your pattern tells you to cut to what size triangle paper you will need. And that is on my blog, it's a free little chart. And maybe Heidi can bring that to the top of the blog and put it in one of the posts. And she can, you can just find it easily enough there. Just a little backwards, so triangle paper comes two ways from primitive gatherings. Now I had, I, I designed this because I wasn't in love with some of the papers that were out there. It had too many different lines going on and they weren't accurate and too much cutting. So I want to cut one line between my half square triangles, not have a line here, a space, and then a line and have to cut that one and then have to cut a little smidge off the next one. I want to cut one line. So that's why I designed these and they're nice and fine. And some of them even have eighth inch seam allowances in them and I know that that has nothing to do with anything else when you sew, but it's all in there. It's like magic. So don't even try to think about what I just said there. But when you see that it only has an eighth inch seam allowance, see this only has an eighth inch seam allowance, but it doesn't do anything but use less fabric because of the eighth inch seam allowance that's built in. You still would sew with a quarter inch when you're sewing the units together. Okay, so. The paper comes in sheets, 
and the big stuff like this, all sizes, and we do have some variety packs. Like this one here has one and a half, one and three quarters, two and two and a half. It has five sheets of each, so a good little selection to see if you like those or not. And we're gonna give some of those away. So we have a large variety pack and we have a small variety pack. Half inch, three quarters, one and one and a quarter. So we'll give away these today. We're gonna to give away four of those for people who leave comments for us. And then we also have it specifically for tri or for um, triangle paper, yeah. Charm paper, charm fabrics. Ch these are triangle charms. So they're built for five inches. So when you pull these out, you're gonna trim this away and then you're gonna put that on your charm square. Could you use these on regular fabric? Yeah, but you're gonna, you're gonna get a lot more real estate with these if you're gonna do yardage. So I hope I explained that good. I just heard something go off. Batteries are charged. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so those, and we have all sizes. Kaylee just grabbed a little sampling of the charm paper, the triangle papers, charms, and sheets. All right, trying to clean off my surface. So if you love this quilt, after I show you how to wonderfully half square try to make half square triangles, they wanted me to point out that this quilt is in Urban Patchwork Gatherings, and the kit, we still have kits for it. It is called Snowflake Star. And I believe those are one and a half inch finished half square triangles. Yep, one and a half inch. Okay. Now, because the project that I'm working on uses, I'm trying to use up scraps, I'm going to show you how to use your scraps or how to use your big pieces. And you can decide which one is good for you. So this is right here on my desk here that I've been practice sewing, you know, warm up skills. I have done a few rows here. This is a whole sheet. This is 40. If you look on the top part of your triangle paper, it'll say one strip is 10 half square triangles or the whole sheet is 40. Now the little clue I gave you earlier in a video is that you are gonna need 116 of these strips. So this would be four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so like this piece right here, see what I got going on here? I have not big enough for four. So I pre-trimmed all of these. So see how this one has four on there? That's not gonna fit on this piece of fabric. So what I did is, because my blue is big enough, I trimmed one of them off. So that's gonna fit on there. And then I ha saved the other one, and that's gonna fit on this one here. So see how I'm using all of the blue, but I put on two different lights, and I'm gonna be able to make this work that way just like that. So the first thing I did is I went through my scraps and I cut them all for like this 10 inch width. And I've been sewing on. So I just sew a couple times, a couple of them every time I sit by my machine. So when you see 1152, it's not like I'm sitting down and sewing all of those at one time. Just put a, run a couple through here and there while you're working on your other projects. Remember, we have over a month to do these half square triangles, but um, that's how I accomplish things. I don't just sit down and put my nose and just sit there and sew, 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 and I would lose my mind. So a little bit at a time, a couple sheets, a couple strips here and there, that's what you do. So I'm starting to do a little bit of trimming when I when I do them so I can count how many strips I do have I didn't I only did the long cut on these I still have to do all the other cutting but like I said I'm trying to keep track of what I have and I need I did my little math before I need 66 more so I already have 50 of them done 
And I've only been doing this maybe two, three times that I've sat down at my table. And then I had to get some of these ready for you guys. So, you know, maybe four times if, I, if I'm really honest. But these fabrics are scraps, like I said, and they've already been starched. So if you don't start your fabrics, I highly recommend it. And you can start your scraps. There's nothing wrong with starching now. But if you're a long time quilter and you've never starched, hey, it's up to you. I only give you suggestions. What you do with them is your business. Okay, so how we start off is you get your full sheet, you trim what you need for your configuration of what you have. And I'm going to just kind of finish up this one here and then I'm going to move to this one. But the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put your dark on the bottom and your light on top. And this helps when pressing the triangle to the, to the dark. I don't press my half square triangles open. I, I leave this to the dark. That's too much work to press those little seams open. Okay. So this is a little, um, I'm just gonna warm up on this one, make sure everything's working right. I like to use a darker thread when sewing triangle paper because I can really see my lines then and it really helps you know, if I wiggle a little bit and I need to correct, like maybe I, I didn't quite get the dashed line and I went into the seam allowance, I can really see that if I do a, a high contrasting thread. And uh, this has a medium gray in it right now or a navy I was sewing on earlier. That's all navy. Right. Okay. So I put this in here, light on top, put my paper on. You can put a pin in here if you want. I do not. Um, one of the things that I want to kind of go over is all your directions for this are right here. So, be, so I don't miss anything. Oh, did I do that too fast? Yeah. Right here is the directions. They're not on the sheet, so you have to save this cover sheet. So I'm going to cut my sections apart. I've already done that. I've layered my two fabrics right sides together with the light on top. I'm going to shorten my stitch length. So I usually stitch about a smidge under two normally. So to do paper, I'm going to go to one. And then I'm going to just stitch away. And if you don't have a machine that has a thread cutter, a knee lift, you might want to get one of those for quilting. Those are must-haves for quilting. And one of the things I do is I look ahead of where I'm stitching and I don't put a lot of pressure on this with my hands. I just kind of gently let the feed dogs pull it through. So that one's all stitched, so you can kind of see on the back. So see here where I ran off and, and didn't do a straight one? So it was in the seam allowance, so it's I'm good. But if you do do one that hold it up again? if you do do one that you mess up on, you would just go over here and be like, nope, that one's not good, and put a big fat X in there and don't use that one when it comes up. Hold it towards me. There. The other side. Turn it around. What's that? Turn it around. Yeah, so that you can see that. Perfect. Okay. Yep. All right. So that one's ready to be cut apart. So now I'm just going to bring these over here and I'm going to show you how to stitch these when they're not even connected. All right. So I'm going to put that one on and I'm going to start in the corner. And then I'm going to get this one ready. Make sure my salvage is up there, uh, right about there. And then I was going to show off and maybe just sew on this one, but I don't think I'm going to do it. I think I'm just going to sew that one separately. <laughs> but I'll just sew a couple of these.
So you kind of get the idea on how I do that. And then the short little ones, you're just going to do that back and forth. We get the cheapest copy paper we can we can for that. We don't use our good copy paper that we put a pattern on. It's kind of flimsy. I don't know the exact poundage of it, but it is. It's not like it's a regular printer. I think paper. it's twenty. Yeah, pounds. but you're gonna see how easy it comes off. Well, you think it's what? It's, I think it's like twenty pounds. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and then want to know if you rip it, if you tear it off when you're done. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna see me do that in a second right here. All right. So now this is the one I stitched before. See if I can cut sitting down. And I like a smaller ruler when I'm trimming my triangle paper because it's just more controllable. And you do have to cut accurate when you're doing this. So if your ruler does slip and you cut into one of them, again, mark that one as not a good one. And sometimes I use my ruler too. So not only am I looking at this line here, I'm actually looking to make sure that this is also on a line too. So this is on one and a half right now too. So I'm actually checking it in two spots that it's on there nice. Now this is still usable for another strip. So I'm going to pull these apart because I already have four strips with these two fabrics. So I'm going to save this to put a different light with. So all of these are still usable. So now I'm going to go on the other side here. I'm going to trim all on one side first. All on the right sides of the triangles. Don't try to cut the left side yet. I want to be able to use my ruler and make sure it's the right size too when cutting that second side. So I did all the rights, now I'm going to turn and now I'm going to do the other side. So now what I mean by that is now I'm not just lining my ruler up, I, can, I have that one and a half inch here as well. I'm using my itty bitty Ace 3x7 ruler, which I love for trimming, so see how you can here you go, Kaylee. Oh. So see how nice that is? You shouldn't see any of that line. So here's one that I didn't cut off yet. So see how fine those lines are? That's what we're cutting away. You don't want to see any of that black line. That's why I made them so super fine. Before I was cold, now I'm hot, <laughs> put my sweater on and now I'm hot. The air conditioning in here can be hot or cold. All right, so now I've got all the long strips off. I'm going to put those back on, turn, and I could line these all up, do mass cutting if you're good. If not, if you're a little leery about it, don't do it. Do them single. You gotta get them just right, that first cut, and then they should be all even. Is 
It's only good for so long. <laughs> Two. All right, then we got the bottom end here. And then, of course, all the corners, or all the middles now. And the middle one, you don't have to be so perfect. If you wiggle that one, it's okay. It's just the seam allowance. So while I'm cutting, are there any questions so far? Mm -hmm. Please. What rulers are you using? Okay. And what rotary cutter do you like the best? This is my favorite right here. You're not ever going to see me using another one. The reason why I like this 60 is because I can cut through multiple layers. Like last night I was making um, Revel blocks and I was cutting like six layers of fabric all at one time. So I have six blocks left to do and um, I didn't trim that one good. Um, I could easily cut multiple layers with this 60 and wool. You know, sometimes when I'm cutting wool, it's thick enough for the wool. So you see how I use my rotary cutter as um, kind of like, instead of touching it, I just use my rotary cutter to move stuff around. So that one, I can see the black line. So I'm just gonna trim that one one more time. And what was the other question? Rotary cutter and oh, ruler. ruler. So I don't know if you know this, but I designed five rulers for Creative Grid, and they're called Itty Bitty Ace. Now these rulers have no solid lines on them. Everything is a dashed line. And then they also have seven ace, three ace, five ace, all those are written on the ruler. So there's no guessing. Like some of us are better at fractions than others and we don't know if five ace is bigger than, you know, seven ace or how, how does that work? Or, I mean, obviously you do, but um, you know, sometimes when we have three sixteenths, like where's that? So um, it's a good thing to familiarize yourself with fractions just find a, you can go just Google it and it'll give you all the measurements between the inches and you know, it's okay to get a little refresher to where things are. But my rulers on the bottom here, um, the quarters and halves and three quarters are all in white and then the other black diamonds are all the 1A, 3A, 5A, 7A on there. And I have a 3 by 7, I have a 6 by 6, I have a 15 by 15, I have a 5 by 15, I have a 8 by 24. And none of my rulers have that extra half inch on them. Uh, so I, I'm not a, I'm not a fan of that half inch. I know that sometimes it comes in handy, but it, I, I can do without it. Why do you use smaller rulers and have to reposition every time instead of using a longer ruler? Instead of using a longer ruler, like when I was moving that. Yeah. Cause just cause probably accuracy. Yeah. It's, it's about control. All right. And I only had this little mat. So if I have a bigger ruler than my mat, I mean, small mat, small ruler, small cutting. You know what I mean? And I, I use this to cut those long things. I could have used my 5x15, but just for the video here today, this is what Kaylee had by my desk, so I used it. Sometimes it's about using what you have around you. All right, now I have all these cut. So these are 40 half square triangles, right? So I have them all paper side up. And then I'm going to squish them all together, and I'm going to flip them over like that and lay them on my pressing surface, just like that. I'm going to roll on over here. I'm going to take a drink because now I'm sweating. It's warm in here. <laughs> they want to know how your shoulders feel after all that cutting sitting down. I, I um, get a pretty good workout. I'm in shape. My shoulders are in cutting shape. 
Except for, I remember one time I did the you know, little, little itty bitty twisters and I had to just do this little cut like 280 times. That I really blew my shoulder out that time because it was just those short little jerky movements. All right, so now here I am. Uh, this is my favorite iron. If you do not um, have a big steam station that has steam on demand, steam is your friend in quilting. I don't know how people stitch and quilt without steam. I, I have no idea how it is. All right, so now my stack of triangles is dark side up, and I'm just going to grab each one of them, and I'm going to lay it on my mat, and I'm going to just kind of what I call chain pressing. So I pick it up by the point, and I just lay them on top of each other, and I just keep pressing. Now I'm not using a lot of muscle. I'm letting the weight of the iron actually just move that triangle over. I am not using hardly any force at all. I am testing out a new iron though. So once in a while, this iron likes to just like throw up on my fabric. And I don't really like that, but I put up with it because I love this iron. But once in a while, and I know you have to clean that thing a little bit more, and I'm probably guilty of not doing it enough. All right, any more questions while I'm pressing? Do you have to use a different needle when going through paper in your sewing machine? Nope. I just use my regular, whatever I'm quilting with. Can you rephrase the question? Oh, sorry. Um, the question was, do you have to change your needle to sew through the paper? I mean, if you want to, I don't. I just keep using my same needle. If you had like a 60 weight needle in there, like if you were doing some fine quilting with invisible thread, I might change it. So you're back to your 70 or your 75. Some people probably quilt with an 80. I quilt with a 75, or piece, I shouldn't say quilt. What iron are you using? This is the Rowenta Steam Station. It's a professional iron, and it's, it's meant to stay on 8, 12 hours a day, and it does. Sometimes it stays on overnight. Not by choice. It does this this model here does not have automatic shut off, which is awesome. Because I think all the new ones do. Alright, so there I have them. Now, this is what I want Kaylee to get up nice and close to. So right like this, Kaylee, is this good? Yeah, here let me see, see that really good. Turn it towards that one. There you go. Zoom in a little bit. All right, so now I'm going to take the paper off. So I hold on to it right in the middle, right near that stitch line, and I'm just going to take my finger, push it underneath the paper, and pull that right off. So see how easy that comes right off? It just rips right off. So to do it fast, this is how I do it. I just kind of, and you have to do two of them. You have to do that triangle and then that little piece. But this is sometimes when I have lots of these, I give these to Nick and I make him do pull these off while he's watching the game. So if you stitch on the line, the dashed line, and if you cut on the solid line, every one of these is a perfect inch and a half ready to be sewn into blocks. No trimming. I don't even trim off this little dog ear. See the little dog ear that's left on there? And there's only one. It's like magic. I don't know how it happens, but. So that little itty bitty one is left on there. I am kind of over the fact of trimming dog ears off. I leave them on a lot of times until, unless they necessarily have to come off. So see how I just grabbed a bunch of them in my hand here and I'm just kind of sliding them through. I just pick up a stack. Flip them over and just keep peeling. And this peeling this paper off is much faster than trimming four times around your triangle. Like making these oversized and then trimming them to one and a half. That's, I'd lose my mind if I had to do that. All right, 
right, let's, let's pick some winners of the triangle paper. Is Jessica working on winners? I got them. You got them? Okay. You want to bring them over? Yes, ma'am. Got all four ready for you. All right. Ooh, we got fancy little slips now. Yeah, I need those for you. Hey, we're moving up. <laughs> Should I read them off? Yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Okay. There's I one that's going to be hard to pronounce. I didn't do it on purpose. You didn't do a good job? No, no. I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you picked one I couldn't pronounce on purpose? Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's the heat that's getting to me. <clears throat> So if you don't have a sewing machine, did you see how easy that was for me to move from line to line to line with that when I can cut with either pressing a button or using my foot like I was using my foot and then the knee lift to help raise the presser foot. You see how easy that was? Now I sew on a Juki most of the time and I've been sewing on these machines for probably 25 years. I have three, three of them. So when they first came out in 1998, it's the T, it's called the TL98, and then now they have the TL2010 that came out 10 years later, and it had a couple more features on it, like it had the, the bunny and the hair, so you could slow it down if you wanted to. And then um, it also had LED lighting on it. And now the new one that just came out in 2020 has this beautiful paint job, it has some different feet. It has boxes that your feet live in instead of just a plastic crappy bag that the other ones came in. All right, how long have we been recording now? What time is it? 32 minutes. Okay, so in 32 minutes, while explaining, so not even really because I've been explaining I've, already, I've done 40 half square triangles, plus talked and plus did all that, just like that. Now these are ready to go. So they're perfect, they're the right size. And now I can start, if I wanted to, sewing them together. So I'm doing scrappy nine patch triangles like this. So do you see how when you sew them together with your scant quarter inch, that I still have my quarter inch seams up here. I'm not gonna cut off any points. And I'll tell you what, I don't do a lot of pinning either with these things. They just automatically kind of nest in place because pinning slows you down if you don't need to do it. So now if I was gonna start sewing these, I'd lay them out. See how they're all the right size. And don't get me wrong, you might get one or two that's a little wonky. You can compensate for that one, or you can not use it. So another thing I want to point out is this machine just has a little, a little hole in the throat plates. If you have a bigger opening in your machine, you might want to see if you can get a single hole throat. When you're working with these tinier triangles. So these will go together just like this. It's the same quarter inch seam allowance and you just start feeding them through. So there's nothing different than making these little triangles than sewing two squares together because right now that's all I'm doing is sewing two squares together. These are two squares running them through my machine. So do you see how this is going to be fun? This is going to not if you just kind of like calm down about it and not freak out from the beginning, have a good attitude that these are going to work. And if you see that the lines are there, that you're cutting on the lines and you're sewing on the lines, these will be perfect. I promise you that. All right. But if you're wiggle or you do some other things, then I can't guarantee you. But just move those aside and work on the ones that are nice. Okay. All right, any other questions before we, uh, I know I have to, I had a couple announcements, right, Jess, about, uh, don't forget, we have 25% off our fabric, and finally, everything's working on the website, so no more snafus. Um, sometimes it just, you know, 
I'll have to put all these rules in place or you can't, you know, behind the scenes in that little coding, you have to like exclude this and exclude that. And sometimes it excludes everything. And sometimes you put the wrong day in it for it to start. And it was supposed to start on the 11th, but so we'll get it figured out one of these days. Anniversary. Okay. So we do have an anniversary sale coming up. I think it's the 8th through the yep. 14th. 15th? 14th. 14th. 8th through the 14th is our anniversary sale. 19.1, 19 years in business, one year at this location. We're going to have some fun going on here, make and takes. If you want to sign up ahead of time for your make and take, you're going to get a $10 gift card for the store. Um, lots of fun here. Come and sew the whole week of EAA, which is uh, 25th through something. Yep, 25th through the 29th. Yeah, so if you're local, 25th through the 29th to come and sew, just $25, eat lunch, hang out, sew your brains out the whole time. All right, kids camp today. Hey, do I have anybody uh, that wants to come and show off their little things that they made today? So it's kind of fun. Some of the moms here today, or some of the moms all week who work here, their kids have been in quilt camp. So I have two of them here that want to show you some of their projects that they made. They are super proud of them. And we have like a kind of a jungle maze here of cords that they have to get through. Come you crawl under. Yep, come on. Crawl under. <laughs> crawl under. Dude, crawl under there. You can do it. <laughs> They're just going to pop up. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Say your name. My name is Emma. Emma. And your name? My name is Evie. Evie, all right. So you bought, you guys have been in camp how many days? Um, four. Four days, and it's like two hours, right? Mm -hmm. And you get to do whatever you want, right? She gives you some suggestions, but you get to design, pick out your own colors, right? Yeah. All right, so show us some of the things you made. Today I made a morab. A morab? Yeah, Is a that morat. like A morac? A morac. Uh, more rat? I don't know what that is. <laughs> I don't know. I think a mole and a rat combined. Okay. A creature. Yeah. <laughs> she made a creature. So you sewed all these on by yeah. yourself? Yeah. Awesome. I see that little uh, number in there too. Yeah. Is that on the fabric? Mm -hmm. Good luck. I'm a strike. Strict. Oh, a strict judge? Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to like put him somewhere and have somebody find him or what? Mm, I don't know. No, you keep him. <laughs> all right. What else you have? Oh, I have this thing. Oh, you fussy cut a Barbie doll or a lady, right? Yeah. It looked like kind of like paper dolls or paper, whatever those like were. This one's from yeah, these are from the, um, I think these are Lori Holtz pattern uh, from one of her uh, fabrics. So you fussy cut that and glued that on there? Yes. How did you glue it? Um, a glue stick. A glue stick. Okay. And did you sew that bow on too? Um, yeah. That's awesome. Um, our teacher um, made the bow. She made the bow? Yeah. Okay. All right. So what do you have, Evie? Um, I made um, this, and it kind of like hangs, so I would like put a nail in the wall, and then I would hang it on the string. So you're going to hang this? Yeah, like the night stars, like when, like when, um, at night time, there's like stars in the sky. You're right. You have stars on your fabric and you have button stars. That's good practice for when you lose a button on your shirt, right? <laughs> All right. What else do we have? Um, I made a pillow with a heart. And you hand sew it all around the edges too, huh? Very cool. I know you made a whole bunch of things because you've been in there four days. So you must have just picked your favorites? Mm -hmm. Well, we've been the rest. Oh, you brought them home. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing. Good job. All right. Careful when you back when you go underneath. All right. Don't let that come down on you. All right. I'm going to watch while you do that. Sneak under. Oh, to be that agile again. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay. You should have saw how cute. They all were over there. There was like 26 total kids that we had in kids camp. Some of them went for one day and then they thought they, and then they only signed up for one day, but they had so much fun. They came back for a couple more days. So it was, uh, 
super fun. The kids loved it. Our teacher, Adrian, is a new employee who has just moved here from Chicago. She's a wonderful teacher and her, her goal is to keep this going. We will have more kids camps throughout the year and different times like during um, breaks, like winter break. So if you have some kids, get them in here and we will let them create a way. So I have just announced the winners and then I'm gonna let you go and try some triangle paper. I know a bunch of you have already ordered it. Thank you so much. I don't think I have anything else. Oh, here, kids camp, Monday, August 4th. We're gonna do that must be a Saturday maybe, or Monday, it's a Monday. And then four to six on September 21st, October 19th, November 7th, and December 14th. Those are all kids camp days as well. And you can always call Judy at the gathering and her number is 920-778-8031 if you need more information on that. It's like $20. We just let the kids use our scraps. We let them pick what they want. We don't make kits. We let them be creative and have a lot of fun with that. All right, so winners of triangle paper, small variety pack. So you'll have some one inches in there. Deanna Bowman, you have one. So if I call off your name, please send us an email at store at primitivegatherings.us with your physical address so we can get these out in the mail to you. This is the name right here. Linda, Jendo, Kendo, Jen, Jen Dilly. Linda, think. you're a winner. <laughs> Paulette Granky, Granky, Lisa Driscoll, you are the winners of the triangle paper of the variety pack, so you can try some different sizes as well. All right, now everyone, start stitching your one-inch finished half square triangles. Have a good day. We'll see you next week.